Scientists are warning of a new coronavirus variant spreading, spreading across Europe, which now apparently accounts for the majority of new COVID cases in several European countries. Joining us now is the lead author of that research, Emma Hodcroft, molecular epidemiologist at the University of Basel. Emma, thank you very much indeed for your time. Um, can you just explain what is different and is this why this second wave feels as strong as the first? So one thing that's really important to note is that even though the dynamics of this variant are notable, this isn't the majority variant in every country in Europe that's seen a spike. So it's certainly not the cause of that spike that we've had in the last few weeks entirely. The reason this variant caught our eye is because it seems to have originated in Spain and very quickly traveled to different countries around the EU. It's in at least 12 countries right now. When it arrived in those countries, it seems to have spread quite effectively, and in more than one country, it's now the dominant variant. Does it, tr does it affect people differently than the first variant? How does that work? So we don't have any evidence that's the case right now, and I definitely want to highlight that because I don't think there's any reason for people to be worried. What we really think might have been behind this spread is the holiday season. We know that in Spain, cases started rising in July, and that's exactly the time when people started traveling once again. And of course, Spain's a great holiday destination. A lot of people went there. But there was limited screening when people came back to their countries, and not everyone may have followed quarantine rules effectively. And of course, if those variants were imported, countries have had a hard time containing cases. So the var the, this variant might have really just had a perfect storm through which it was able to spread so efficiently. Is this going to affect the way that we think about vaccines? Is, is the vaccine that's being developed going to work on this as well? So we do think that the vaccine will still work. And we think that, for example, if you've already had COVID, that you won't, the immunity that you have from that would work against this variant as well. So we're not so concerned about those aspects. But we do think this could be really important as far as helping us figure out better ways to make sure that when we start traveling again in Europe in the future, that we don't lose out the hard fought um, reduction in cases that we're all trying to get to mm -hmm. when we open our borders and accept travelers from other countries. Well, that's something that I think has been really puzzling is that, you know, for how prepared and how, quote unquote, well that Europe did it the first time, it feels very surprising of how bad they did it this time. And I wonder, is it a reopening thing? Was it just, you know, the tracking apps weren't ready? How do you understand that? So I think, unfortunately, a lot of scientists had a feeling that autumn and winter was going to make this harder. When people come inside and they turn on heating, this is a more uh, useful environment for the virus to transmit more easily. People aren't meeting outside. You build up stale air in the room when you don't have the windows open, and the heat can help the virus transmit further. And we didn't really prepare for this, I think, very well over the summer. As well as that, I think a lot of countries hesitated. Even though the measures worked in the spring, they weren't popular and they were economically damaging. So I think a lot of countries kind of waited as long as possible before they started taking action. And we know early action is most effective. Emma, is it, is it historical, is it a historical norm that the second wave can be stronger or stronger than the first wave? So we've definitely seen this in the past, but I really want to underscore that I don't think this is inevitable. This is all due to our behavior and the restrictions that we put in place. We know a lot about how this virus works now, and we know a lot about how to contain it. We've seen countries in Asia do this very effectively. We can get this virus under control if we want, but it will mean a balance in what we invest in and the kind of economic and uh, transmission policies that we decide to put in place. So what does that actually look like? Because at least Dr. Fauci here in in the U.S. is basically saying, look, if you had everybody wearing masks, you could really shut this thing down. What do you think? So, yes, I think masks are an incredibly simple yet incredibly effective way to try and reduce transmission. They stop those small droplets that come out when we speak or when we cough from traveling through the air. Investment in test and trace systems is also one of the most important things. Some of the countries that have really done best at containing this virus have just poured resources into this. But these only work when cases are low. So countries have to really decide that they're going to be willing to take the steps with things like mask wearing, maybe reducing densities in restaurants, restricting closing times if there's a lot of cases, maybe even going into lockdown, to keep those cases low enough that your test and trace teams can work efficiently. Has that point passed here in Europe? Are we at the point now where lockdowns will be required? And is that ultimately what you think we're seeing? 
So I'm really disappointed that we're in a position where countries are starting lockdown type measures or are considering them. I don't think this was inevitable at all. We had a good summer to prepare for this and we do know how to contain the virus, as I said. But when you have cases so high that it looks like they might overwhelm your hospitals or indeed in Belgium where they're actually worried about running out of medical staff to work in those hospitals, then the fastest way to get case numbers down is through lockdown type measures. I don't think it was inevitable, but I'm afraid that that might be the situation we're in in many countries in Europe right now.